Unfiltered, be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. The entertainment company founded by rapper and businessman Sean Jay-Z Carter is entering into a multi-year partnership with the NFL to enhance the NFL's live game experiences and to amplify the league's social justice efforts. That's what the press release says, but a lot of people are wondering what's really going on here. Now, Jay-Z showed tremendous support for Colin Kaepernick, who still is being whiteballed by the NFL. He's ready to play, but NFL, not one team has picked that phone up to call him, even though they got some scrubs, some scrubs who are playing. In that news conference today, which is actually invitation only, I was invited, uh, but Mark Thompson of Make It Plain Radio, Mark actually went on our behalf, and so we're going to talk to him in just a second. But Charlemagne the Guy of The Breakfast Club asked Jay-Z how could he partner with the NFL on social justice when Colin Kaepernick, who brought it to the attention of the masses by peacefully protesting against social injustice, is still being denied a job. Now, here's the deal. This is what Jay-Z said was to bring attention to social injustice, correct? So uh, in, that, in that case, right, this is the success, right? This is the, the next thing, right? Because there's two parts of protesting. You go outside and you protest, and then the company or the individual say, I hear you. What do we do next? Right? So for me, there was, for me, this, for me, it was like action, actionable item. What are we going to do with it? Like everyone heard, and we hear what you're saying, and everybody know I agree with what you're saying. So, what are we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? So, we should millions and millions of people, and or we get stuck on Colin not having a job. Okay, some of you may be wondering why were we only hearing Jay Z in sing photos? Well, first and foremost. No video cameras were allowed in this news conference. It really wasn't even a news conference. Uh, it was invitation only. <clears throat> there was no uh, speaker, no conference call line there. So for reporters who were not in New York to actually participate in this, no social media was allowed. <clears throat> no photos were taken. The photos that you saw there were actually supplied by Rock Nation. Now, that's how normally that's not how news conferences go. But that's actually what took place. Now, still, there's a lot we don't know about this, this partnership between the NFL as well as Rock Nation. But Carolina Panther safety Eric Reed, former teammate of Colin Kaepernick and who continues to take a knee during the national anthem, has his doubts. In a series of tweets, Reed questioned the deal in light of the recent backlash against Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross, saying this. Interesting timing on the partnership with Jay-Z on the heels of Stephen Ross's fundraiser for Donald Trump and the backlash his other companies are getting because of it. He went on to say, you and some others seem to misunderstand that we had no beef with the NFL until they started perpetu perpetuating the systemic oppression that we are fighting by blackballing Colin and then me. Nah, I won't quit playing, but I will be a royal pain in the NFL's ass for acting like they care about people of color by forming numerous disingenuous partnerships to address social injustice while collectively blackballing Colin, the person who brought oppression and social injustice to the forefront of the NFL. Joining me right now is Mark Thompson, 
host of Make It Plain Radio, who was at the news conference uh, there uh, on behalf of us at Roland Martin Unfiltered, and also Jamel Hill, staff writer for The Atlantic. I'm going to start with you, Mark. Again, they decided no video, um, no conference. You, you could only do an audio recording portion of the Q&A. Um, were you struck? by those decisions and do you feel as if you got a clear understanding as to what this deal is between Jay-Z, Rock Nation and the NFL? Well, in, in answer to the first part, thank you for having me on and greetings to uh, Queen Jamel as well. Um, when I, I got there, it was peculiar. Uh, and when you do that type of thing, it makes you wonder whether or not there's something to hide or some guilt or some defensiveness. Um, why wouldn't they let us film? Why wouldn't they let us take pictures? They didn't even want us to tweet while we were there uh, in the room. Um, they did allow us to record um, the Q&A part of the session, but it, it was a bit unnerving and unusual that they wouldn't let us do anything live or, or share any video. Um, uh, overall, I would say that uh, Jay-Z was a little bit uh, defensive. And let me just say, I have a lot of respect for him. He may mean well. We know the uh, power and influence and the, the voice that he has. But there was a little bit of defensiveness, which to me raises the question, why would you even put yourself in that position uh, where you would have to be defensive about this? Uh, Charlemagne and I both asked him about uh, Colin Kaepernick. And, you know, he, he said some very interesting things uh, including, as, as you just heard in that clip, we reach millions and millions of people or we get stuck on Colin not having a job, which, I mean, to say that one is stuck on that, to me, is, is, is a little bit insensitive. Um, but he's a capitalist. He's a businessman. I think he sees an opportunity. The NFL certainly does. Uh, but I think it's a big risk because I think people are going to scrutinize this. And, and one of the biggest risks of all is that if he's going to be trying to manage and attract acts to come into the NFL, that mind you, this isn't just the Super Bowl, um, they're going to be developing soundtracks and videos with major musicians around the NFL. Basically, the NFL is going to try to marry itself to popular music and popular culture. And I mean, we can talk later about what that agenda is all about. It's very interesting. Never seen anything like this before. So you'll be getting theme songs rolling in Jamil um, throughout the NFL season by major artists. They're going to be doing soundtracks. They're going to be doing videos. And so your, um, uh, on all the digital streaming platforms, your music experience is likely to be very much tied to the NFL and promoting the NFL. It'll be a, an incredible cross promotion. I just think it's naive to think that music and entertainment, while it's often used um, to uh, uh, as an opiate for us, I don't think it's going to work this time. There, there's so many issues out here, and I also don't think that, that the players themselves uh, are going to let this keep them right. from demonstrating or making uh, uh, making the statements they feel they need to make. Jamel Hill, um, the, the, Jay-Z had a quote where he said, I said no to the Super Bowl. You need me. I don't need you. And I guess for me, I, where I'm just still confused, I've been to NFL games. I stopped going, and when... Colin Kaepernick uh, wasn't signed. It's been now going on three years. Here's the reality. I hear hip-hop right now in NFL stadiums. Um, well, I see other acts as well. I see what happens in Atlanta. Uh, just just what's your understanding of this partnership? Uh, just just what do you make of it? Well, I think it's, it's very confusing because um, I'm just, you know, Jay-Z is a shrewd guy. I mean, we, we don't have to qualify everything that we say as we talk about this, but it feels like we have to because that just speaks to the level of respect that he has, um, especially in the African-American community. But uh, I think he either misplayed his hand or, or isn't quite seeing really the big picture in this. Um, you know, all those things that, that they're talking about doing with social justice are things that Jay-Z was doing anyway. He doesn't need the NFL to do that. He doesn't need the NFL's um, validation. He doesn't need their platform. And he doesn't need to broker an another music deal. And while I get that this is an opportunity to maybe bring some other art artists and to obviously implore more people, particularly people of color, around a huge global or a huge national brand uh, like the NFL, 
Um, at the same time, he, he has to understand that the NFL ultimately got what they wanted. They wanted to have a cultural connection with the community because I think they realized, especially after Kaepernick struck that deal with Nike, that there were a lot of black people or a lot of people that supported Colin Kaepernick and were willing to not watch their product um, or were certainly willing um, to not hold the league in that high esteem that they were used to being held in because of how they felt about him. And early on or throughout most of this uh, saga with Colin Kaepernick, they have doubled down on the people who have been shouting against him. And now they're trying to win back all the people who were shouting on his behalf. And it just looks like Jay-Z allowed himself to be used as that entry point um, to do that. And um, I guess I would say that I understand, at least from what I'm hearing, why Colin Kaepernick is so disappointed because you can't wear this jersey at on Saturday Night Live, wear his jersey on Saturday Night Live and talk about some of the issues that you've talked about and then turn around and strike a deal with the same people who on one side of their neck say that they're about um, issues that disproportionately impact uh, people of color, but on the other side have gone into overtime to make sure a, a bright, um, promising quarterback like Colin Kaepernick have a job. So I don't know how those things can marry uh, to one another because obviously for them, uh, they still hold uh, they still hold a lot of things against Colin Kaepernick, and now they've been able to divorce him from an issue that he started. This wasn't no disrespect. This wasn't Jay Z's cause, and so for him to kind of come in and kind of take over the movement, um, I guess I'm just a little bit confused as to how this all has gotten to this point. Uh, uh, both of you, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna go to Mark. You first. This is what Jay-Z said. With its global reach, the National Football League has the platform and opportunity to inspire change across the country. Rock Nation has shown that entertainment and enacting change are not mutually exclusive ideas. Instead, we unify them. This partnership is an opportunity to strengthen the fabric of communities across the co America. How? I mean, I'm, I'm, just I'm just trying to understand. The NFL is about the shield. Period. It, it, it's about... How do, you, how do you make a $10 billion a year entity hit $12 or $15 billion? That's what this is about. And so I was trying to understand how will soundtracks and videos somehow speak to this issue of social change. Mark, to, to what to Jamel said, the, the, the reality is you can do social justice work. I mean, Colin Kaepernick is doing social justice work independent of the NFL with his own money. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, I think you're exactly right. What, what I found in the room um, was not only can individuals be narcissistic, but if corporations are people, uh, they can be narcissistic too. And there's this attitude, I mean, Goodell even said it, um, that this is the biggest thing in the world, the NFL as an entity. There is nothing bigger there is no greater attraction on the world stage. And to use that attraction to try to impact social justice through music, I mean, why not just cut the middleman out? Um, you're right, there, music already exists, relationships already exist. Why not just cut the middleman out and go straight to the social justice piece? But you're right, this is, this is gonna make money. Uh, obviously, some artists are gonna benefit. But the, the thing, even what Jamel was saying about how it is somewhat baffling and short-sighted on Jay-Z's part. I mean, Jay-Z has a, 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 a great reputation. He has his credibility intact. What if he reaches out to artists to join him to collaborate with the NFL? And those artists say to Jay-Z in the NFL, and Jay-Z in particular, no, because I'm standing with Cap. I mean, why he would want to even risk putting himself in that position is what is very, very confusing to me. Uh, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, finish please. your point, I'm going to Jamel. Yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty much it. So, it, 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 you're right, it's about money, the collaboration, but it's, uh, entertainment It does one thing, but entertainment is useful when the stars themselves speak out on social justice. Entertainment, uh, sports is useful. Athletes are useful when they take a knee, but it's, it's missing how, performances, soundtracks, videos, all of that 
is going to also at the same time meet some of our social justice demands as a people. J J Jamel, the, the, when Jay-Z said, you know, this wasn't about Colin Kaepernick getting a job, but, but the reality is the end result of this black man taking a knee and playing the... And this is the thing that people need to understand. The quarterback position is the premier position in the NFL. It is uh, the most visible position. And for them to say, not only you're not going to play, we're not even going to call you. And to say that, well, he brought attention to the issue, but the issue is really bigger than Colin Kaepernick. No, they're sending a signal that, fine, if you're a wide receiver, okay, Kenny Steele's fine, if you're a defensive back, uh, Eric Reed will let you back in. But what you will not be is the face of the franchise, the face of the NFL, and have the audacity to take a stand. And that, to me, is where a Jay-Z could have said, I will be more than welcome to do this deal, but I will not do the deal as long as that black man is not given another chance to play quarterback. And that simply didn't happen here, Jamel. No, I mean, and here's the thing, though, um, Roland, you also have to see how the NFL checkmated this whole thing. They went for the head of the snake. The head of the snake is Jay-Z. Yep. Because I know you brought up a, a few minutes ago about, or it was brought up by Mark a couple uh, seconds ago, about how other entertainers will, you know, maybe they say no to Jay-Z. Nobody says no to Jay-Z. That's why they went after him. Because between <laughs> him and his wife, you're talking about arguably the two most powerful people in music. And nobody's going to say no to them. In fact, <clears throat> excuse me, by him striking this deal, they feel like now they have permission and it's okay to deal with the NFL again because Jay-Z is doing it, which is what the NFL wanted. You know, what happened at the Super Bowl this year, if everybody remembers, is that Colin Kaepernick was the talk of the week until the game. He wasn't even there, and he was the talk of the week because Roger Goodell had to answer repeatedly why he wasn't in the league. The entire Super Bowl halftime show was clouded by the fact that you have a you have somebody like Adam Levine and Maroon 5 who suddenly have to answer to the fact that they are performing when uh, Colin Kaepernick is out of a job. You have Travis Scott, it's the same thing. And you want to keep the NFL in that uncomfortable position. And I'll say this, I mean, the NFL feels a different kind of resentment, getting back to what you said about, you know, positionally, a quarterback having different expectations than say somebody like Kenny Steele's a wide receiver or any of the other players who have taken a knee. You're absolutely right, a quarterback is considered uh, one of the faces of the league and certainly the face of their team. But the other thing, too, is that Colin Kaepernick was a first. See, the name that Donald Trump hollered out, it wasn't Kenny Steele's, it was Colin Kaepernick. And he was the one, in their mind, that caused them to get caught up in a bunch of political drama and really caused a rift in their fan base, uh, caused a rift between players and owners. They blame Colin Kaepernick taking a knee for all of those things. And while, yes, Jay-Z is absolutely right, this is bigger than Colin Kaepernick. But again, he doesn't need the NFL to bring attention to some of the same issues right. that Colin Kaepernick was. And considering that Colin Kaepernick started this by making an individual choice, he did not put together a movement. He made an individual choice to take a need to bring attention to some of the issues that he felt like were severely impacting communities of color. For the NFL to now do everything in his power to make sure that his face, that his beliefs, that his blueprint is taken off this issue. They just played a really great game of divide and conquer. They did the same thing with the Players Coalition, with Malcolm right. Jenkins. They did, they're doing the same thing now with Jay-Z by getting him to essentially, while he may still support Colin Kaepernick, but basically have to denounce him to be a part of their league. And, and, and Mark, that is it. The NFL... Yeah was all about get this off of the front pages. We're tired of Rihanna lighting us up on social media. We're tired <laughs> of other entertainers. And so, yes, go for the master stroke. Go for the biggest impact possible. And, yes, they couldn't get Beyonce. So, look, guess what? You talk about you, uh, you're getting Jay-Z. Robert Kraft is at the center of this. These conversations go back to last year. According to the Wall Street Journal, five different conversations over the past year. You also have this back and forth because 
Uh, the folks at Rock Nation uh, said that Jay-Z absolutely talked to Kaepernick. Jay-Z said, though, when he was asked about that, well, he did not talk to him about it. He right. informed him on Monday that he was doing the deal. But it's not like, hey, let's talk about if I do this deal. Mark, that didn't happen. Well, I asked him point blank today, did he speak with him? And he told me yes. And I asked him, what was Cap's reaction? Is Cap uh, supportive of this initi initiative? And he refused to disclose. He said he would not disclose his private conversation with Cap. Uh, I can and tell you for a fact, Colin Kaepernick does not support this. Of course. Was not course made not. aware of the details of this. I can tell you that for a fact. Mark, go ahead. Well, so, so there's... There's that, which also, you put that together with the the veil of secrecy, no cameras, no social media. And then you, if 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 we know for a fact that that he's not spoken with him or not really invited him, because another question was asked of him in the conversation, another reporter with the New York Daily News went at it another way and asked him, did you invite Colin Kaepernick to be a part of this initiative? And Jay-Z's response was... Um, Colin Kaepernick's pretty much, I'm paraphrasing, not an exact quote, he's pretty much a grown man. He's got to make his own decisions about what he has to do. And, I mean, I don't see how that goes over. I'm just looking on social media while we're talking, and much of the reaction to this is negative. Um, it is not seen as a good thing. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think that this is going to really got change it. anything. And, and, and we asked you, Charlemagne also asked today, why don't you give Colin Kaepernick a job? The NFL could change its image overnight by simply doing that. Right. In fact, in fact, it could shut down all of this. It could literally all shut down all, all of the criticism. The fact that people are still calling them out is because he's being whiteballed. Yeah, yeah. And and until they do that, this is not going to be resolved. Goodell said, though, uh, Kaepernick can sign with a team any day he's ready. I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, what, what teams are talking to him? Right. None. That can't be true. Right. That right. can't be true. And, of course, they all want to put the condition. I also asked Goodell about uh, what is the anthem policy currently, if, if there's one, and are they going to use this new initiative to smother that? In other words, it, let's say players want to take a knee on, on the, the current issues they've been discussing or other issues. player might want to take a knee this year around white domestic terrorism. You got it. That, that's, that's her his right. That's real. And Goodell and, and uh, uh, Jay Z said to me, well, "Why don't we be positive, Mark? Uh, why don't we? Why don't they say let's come to this initiative to address those issues?" So it, it's not really right. But what? But what? Realistic. What? Co come to a music initiative to address white domestic terrorism? <laughs> I mean, that, that's what, what right. the hell are we gonna do? Make a video? No. Right. Right. J J Javel, and, and see. And see. The other question is: Are these music videos? All these? Is this gonna be uh, uh, protest music? Is this going to be conscious music, rock right. music? Who knows? But still, that's, that doesn't do it. Jamel, I want a uh, final question for you. Mark is going to stay. Final question for you, Jamel. Um, do you believe, because I do, Jamel, I, I, I believe it's time for Colin Kaepernick to publicly speak. Uh, I know he's yeah, released a video. Yeah. I, I, I think, and, and again, let, let me be real clear. I felt this way before this deal was announced. I said this months ago. It's really been like three years. He's communicated through tweets, Instagram posts, posting of videos. I believe it's time for Colin Kaepernick to sit down with one person or two or three of us or whatever and talk about this issue, talk about being white ball. He can't talk about specifically the settlement, but the things he can talk about, talk about him still wanting to play. I, because there are people, Jamel, who are saying, bruh, we need right. some sense of direction, because mm -hmm. what? Are we watching? Are we not? What's going on? So, Jamel, your thoughts about that? I would agree with you that at this point, um, I do think that he needs to, um, to say something. And I definitely understood why he wasn't before. Uh, you know, when there was that lawsuit looming, he didn't want to basically make the mistake that NFL owners did where a lot of their comments that they said in the media were definitely used against them uh, in that collusion case. So I understood why he was quiet then. And I know that, um, you know, he's working on his own content initiatives. And so 
uh, that also probably has a, a lot to do with it. But at the same time, I think if anything, um, he needs to talk, not necessarily to give people a sense of of direction because again i often remind people of the fact that colin kaepernick made an individual choice when he took that knee the intention was not to start a movement other people jumped on right. and began to do the same thing for their own personal reasons and out of support for him i understood that you start something that's such an individual decision it gets a little tricky to navigate because of what the original intention was uh, look I, I don't think that you know Colin Kaepernick could tell people to watch or not watch the the NFL but what I do think he can just continue to make clear is the reasons why that he decided to take his stance and also frankly I mean look I know when you settle with somebody like the NFL there's probably stipulations about things that you could say but I really do think that he needs to shed light about how the NFL operates I've covered the league for years I understand how they do which is why none of this surprises me um in terms of them uh you know kind of kind of making this chess move with Jay-Z because that's kind of what they do yep. and so I, I think he needs to give people an understanding about what he has been up against and maybe that will allow people to make their own decision about whether they continue to be NFL fans, about how they feel about these partnerships and how they feel about the, the league in general, because I think there's still a lot of things that people, you know, don't know. And, and you know, when you have a league where a number of owners, this is what another thing people need to understand. Roger Goodell, the owners uh, don't work for Roger Goodell. It's the other way around. Right. And yeah. I yeah. do, I do get that. Jay-Z, like a lot of people, black people in his position, have thought that a good tactic is always working inside out, okay? I totally understand that. But given what they have him doing, yeah, you have the social justice element of it, but you also have things in the NFL that the league needs to answer to. The lack of black coaches, the lack of black GMs, the lack of black defensive and offensive coordinators. They have a whole lot of issues in their league, and I just don't see... It, Jay-Z being able to impact that part, because that, honestly, that's the part that really matters learning the NFL by creating music and creating content. And the NFL is very, they're very suppressive. They're very controlling about their image. They won't even let players wear certain things, wear certain socks. So all of a sudden, they're just going to allow a bunch of artists to say whatever they want about social justice and put it out on their platforms. I don't see it. Jamel Hill. Uh, with The Atlantic also. Check out her podcast. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right, folks. Back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks. Life Lux Jazz is the experience of a lifetime delivering top-notch music in an upscale destination. The weekend-long event is held at the Omnia Day Club Los Cabos, which is nestled on the Sea of Cortez in the celebrity playground of Los Cabos, Mexico. The Life Lux Jazz Experience offers the ultimate getaway for discerning jazz aficionados by pairing an upscale international destination with luxury, with luxury accommodations, fine hot cuisine, top shelf libations, breathtaking golf, exhilarating spa, health and wellness options, and much more, while showcasing some of the biggest names in entertainment. The second annual Life Lux Jazz Experience continues to build upon its success and heritage with jazzing around Los Cabos, a celebratory expansion of accomplishing its goal of sharing all the finest des the destination has to offer, including daytime excursions and many concerts, including the Spirit of Jazz Gospel Brunch and Jazz Sunset Cruise. Confirmed guests, comedian actor Mark Curry, Gerald Albright, Alex Bumon, Raul Madon, Incognito, Pieces of a Dream, Kirk Whalem, Average White Band, Donnie McClurkin, Shalea, Roy Ayers, Tom Brown, Ronnie Laws, and Ernest Quarles. Man, that's a hell of a lineup. For more information, visit the website at lifeluxjazz.com. It's lifeluxjazz.com. Also, we'll be broadcasting Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, from Los Cabos uh, the, the Thursday and Friday. And so you definitely want to be in the house, folks. It is an amazing experience. I can't wait for it all to happen. So go to lifeluxjazz.com to sign up today. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered. If the NFL thought cutting a deal with Jay-Z to co-produce their halftime show as well as be involved in social justice issues was going to somehow end the controversy surrounding Colin Kaepernick, they are sadly mistaken. 
one day after publicly announcing this deal, Jay-Z has come under withering criticism from a number of people by cutting the deal with the NFL, even as they continue to white balls, white ball, and that's right, Colin Kaepernick. Why do we say white ball? Because that's what's happened to Colin Kaepernick by the NFL owners, and so we're not going to use the term black ball. P podcast host Benjamin Dixon says Jay really could have just made his money partnering with NFL without becoming their foil against Kaepernick in the kneeling protest. But now he's going to be a monument for the NFL to say, why are you protesting? Jay-Z said it's time to move on. NFL baller Eric Reed, a former teammate of Colin Kaepernick, tweeted, Jay-Z doesn't need the NFL's help to address social injustices. It was a money move for him and his music business. The NFL gets to hide behind his black face to try to cover up blackballing Colin. Mmm. Also, many other people have been weighing in as well. Colin Kaepernick also tweeted out that he is thankful for the support of Eric Reed by standing with him as well. And on the same day of that Jay-Z Roger Goodell news conference, he also tweeted that it was a, it's been three years since he took a stand and he is still without work. One of the folks who also was critical of Jay-Z is Eton Thomas, former NBA uh, ball player who joins us right now uh, on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Eton, welcome back to the show. So you, you make it perfectly clear that um, you think Jay-Z made a mistake here. Uh, yesterday, we had Jamel Hill on the show. She said the NFL got exactly what they wanted, a cultural icon to stand with on social justice issues in order for them to say, see, it's all good. It's time for us to move on. Yeah, and, and that's the tough part. That's the tough pill that a lot of people can, you know, having difficulty swallowing right now. Um, and, they, and they've seen this before. So remember when the Brooklyn Nets uh, were, were building their Barclays Center and they used Jay-Z um, as kind of like the prop to kind of pacify everybody, to say, you know, well, well you know, don't worry about the fact that we're going to take your homes and gentrify the neighborhood because Jay-Z is part of this. So it's all going to be great for, for everybody involved. And it kind of seems like this is what's happening. It would have been great if Roger Goodell and Jay-Z and during their press conference would have laid out some particulars of what they were going to do. You know, specifically, like if they were going to go and each each um, team was going to have representatives in each city, that the NFL city, and they were going to go and try to implement different things in, in the police departments to try to change, whether it be body cameras or something to hold their accountable, something specific. But, you know, they just said, well, you know, we have Jay-Z with us, so you, you should be happy. And that's, that's, just, that's just not enough. So that's why you're seeing all of the criticism today. Uh, Etan, I think your point is, 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 is you nailed it uh, because that, that has been the issue that I've had for 48 hours. Even when Rock Nation reached out to me, I, uh, of course, Mark Thompson was there at yesterday's gathering uh, representing Roland Martin Unfiltered. Uh, they recorded the Q&A part, and that's the deal. I still don't know what the social justice part is, okay? What I heard, I heard lots of details on the entertainment side. Right. Soundtracks and videos and halftime, but I did not hear specifically what this social justice work is. Jay-Z was quoted as saying, oh, here's an opportunity to, to help millions. Yeah, but I didn't hear what that help is. Right. All we heard was live entertainment strategists. And I think that's what they, they termed it, and that kind of sounds like he's going to be in charge of the Super Bowl halftime show. You know, so I'm like, how is that a step in the right direction towards social justice? And, and that's, that's, that's the issue, and that's the problem. And, you know, in some of his statements that have, you know, come out, you know, he said, well, it, it's, it's time for us to move past kneeling. And, you know, and, and that's what Eric Reed tweeted, and he said, well, the two aren't mutually exclusive. You know what I mean? So, so, so if you could, and, and I, this is what I asked, you know, what if the NFL would have had Kaepernick or at least offered a position to Kaepernick for him to be able to connect with the, the social injustice piece. Now, would that have been perceived differently? You know, I mean, but for, but for Jay-Z to, you know, kind of allow himself to be used in this way, you know, you're going to get a lot of a, a strong reaction, and that's what's happening. And again, when I, when, I, when I heard that comment, and I, and I not only did I hear it, mm -hmm. then I read it, I said, well, it's time to move beyond Neely. First of all, uh, I agree with Jay-Z in that, it's time for action. But what's the action? I didn't hear the action. And the reality is, 
we also cannot still ignore the white balling of Colin Kaepernick. Of so yes, Eric Reed, who is Neil, is back in the league, but let's also be clear, he was white balled for a period of time. Um, uh, Kenny Stills is still in the NFL, but Colin Kaepernick was the one who started all of this. Right. Colin Kaepernick is the one where the teams are saying, nah, he is not going to be it, and I contend, and I don't care what anybody says, because he plays the most high profile position in the NFL, which is quarterback, that that uh, has a lot to do with it. You cannot convince me when I look at some of the sorry players who are in the league playing quarterback who are in camps right now, that somehow he doesn't have the talent to play. And so the NFL can't keep trying to play this, this nonsensical game. And that's also where I think people are also angry with Jay-Z by saying, bruh, you could have said, I'll be happy to do a deal with you the moment one of your team signs him. Until they do, we won't let up. I, I definitely agree, and I want to just go back to the, the point that if, you know, if they would have laid out specifics, it would have been different. It's kind of like, you know, how we're looking at politics right now. So say some, somebody like, you know, I'll just take one person, like Kamala Harris. You know, like, so say that she says that she wants to do all this stuff for criminal justice reform and the prison, to you know, school to prison pipeline and all these different things. But we look at your history, we don't see anything that has ever even resembled you doing anything towards, towards criminal justice. And so you're not giving us any specifics, but you're going to get a celebrity person to kind of co-sign you and say, listen, you all support me because this person is, is supporting me. That's kind of what the NFL did. And it's, it's like it's kind of insulting. It's like, okay, we want to know exactly what you're doing. Don't, don't tell us that he's going to be, you know, over the, the entertainment and think that's just going to be okay with us. And people love Jay-Z. You know, we all, everybody loves Jay-Z. Everybody appreciate. They've seen the, the maturation process. They see the, 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 the maturing in his lyrics. You know what I mean? But then you have that, that part where he says, you know, I don't, I don't know how much... Um, you know, influence one person can have. I think that was one of the quotes that he said. And that's the part that I got to take issue with Jay-Z on because you're, you know, you're in the position where you can say anything and people will follow. You know, we can quote different lyrics where he said, you know, skills be shown, I'd be lyrically Talib Kweli. He said, truth be told, I want to rhyme like common sense, but I did 10 million and I ain't been rhyming like common sense. So that tells me that it's all about the money for you, Jay-Z. You know what I mean? And that's the part that's disappointing because everything in your lyrics have said you're all about the money. You're all about the paper. You know what I mean? If you ain't talking about large uh, amounts, what's the point? All those different things you say, and now you're kind of living that out with your actions. Uh, I want to bring you my pound, Dr. Greg Carr, Chair, Department of Afro-American Studies, Howard University. Joseph Williams, Senior Editor, U.S. News & World Report. Erica Savage-Wilson, host of Savage Politics Podcast. Uh, Greg Carr, I want to start with you. Um, it's very interesting when you, I'm sorry, my apologies, my apologies. Uh, Greg is, Greg is not there yet. Let me, so let me start with, um, uh, Erica. Erica, it is, it's very interesting when, again, you, you, you look at this and, and how the NFL somehow thought, hmm, okay, now we go ahead and, uh, do this deal with Jay-Z, everything goes away. This thing is not going away. And, and I still contend that I believe, and I've sent him a text, he hasn't responded. Now it's time for Colin Kaepernick to also speak out, not just on Instagram, not just on Twitter, because, there, because the, the Q rating show, African Americans hold Colin Kaepernick in high esteem compared to other groups. The numbers don't lie. We saw what happened with Nike as well. And so this thing is not going away until the NFL says two things until a team either signs him or the NFL stops playing games and saying Colin Kaepernick will never play for NFL team again, this is always going to be on the radar. Sure, and the only way that those two things will happen is by force of the people. Um, I remember reading um, $40 million slave by William C. Roden uh, probably about eight years ago, and by that time I stopped watching the NFL just for own um, personal reasons. But in that book, one of the pieces that I really just want to um, bring out, extrapolate rather, is that black people largely are looked at as a source of entertainment. So for me, it was not a stretch to see that the NFL, um, Goodell, that they thought it would be um, uh, strategic to reach out to Jay-Z in order to bring over the large swath of black Americans that may still be protesting the NFL. So um, for me, I think that this um, a, a part of the onus then goes back to the public, the audience to say now, 
if you have continued to boycott the NFL, if you do continue to stand up for black and brown women and men that are being shot down by police officers, by law enforcement, then what are you actually prepared to do so that when an organization such as the NFL comes back and they're really, really needing you, what are you going to say that, no, this is what will happen, um, that we will um, think about entertaining again, meaning watching the NFL games again and then uh, participating if these things are met. So again, I think that we have to also look at um, just as the general public as to what are we forcing by way of boycott for um, organizations like the NFL and other um, um, other uh, corporations to do in order to recognize our voice and our plight. Joseph and, and Jay Z made the point that well, this is this is this is bigger than one man getting a job. N no, one black man not getting a job being denied an opportunity because he dared to protest is part of the thing that he was talking about. Yes, he was protesting police brutality. But the history of black folks in this country is that white folks said, oh, you do this, I'm gonna penalize you. The black people who dared to register to vote who lost their jobs. The black people who dared to stand up to racism, who then uh, had their markers called in, who were who, the, the, the black folks who own land, who were not actually, who were not sold uh, feed, who couldn't grow their land. The black people who did grow products on their land, then white folks said, we're not gonna sell your products at, at, at the farmer's market. We have a history of white folks penalizing black people economically for standing up and that's what we're dealing with here and so Jay, sorry Jay-Z we just can't just ignore this reality well you, and, and and the list that you that you proffered goes on and on and on right and one of the reasons why Colin Kaepernick won that huge settlement from the NFL is because he was on the verge of proving that they denied him a right to earn a living they denied him of the right to practice his chosen profession implicitly and not even explicitly but implicitly they did this and it was a conspiracy they have done everything they possibly could have done to, to, to deny this man a place in the NFL they settled out of court they brought back Eric Reed they don't even show protests anymore on on, on the pregame shows and and during the national anthem that's not even a part of NFL coverage on television anymore so the NFL has done everything they could to try to make this go away Jay-Z is one more chip on that pile. I don't think it's going to move the needle very much, not the least of which because you have so many people suggesting that Jay-Z sold out, right? And the question that I have, and that I was mulling over with some friends of mine this afternoon, in exchange for what? What is Jay-Z getting out of this? I mean, he's already got more money than, than he probably knows what to do with between him and his wife, and he probably has enough influence in the music industry that he can get anybody he wants to do whatever they want. And so if he gets somebody to play on, on, on the Super Bowl halftime show, to what end, right? That person is still going to have the taint of, of Colin Kaepernick, uh, the specter of his non-employment lingering over the Super Bowl. Uh, it was like Jamel, his, Jamel Hill said yesterday, you know, that's all they could talk about during the Super Bowl last year was why was Cap not around? Why was Maroon 5 playing? Why was this rapper uh, 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 agreed to, to, to perform in the halftime show? when everybody knew that this was a, a sham and the reason why everybody was talking about it was the reason why people weren't performing and the reason why black people have turned out. So I'm kind of questioning what Jay-Z gets out of the mix. I mean, it's clear what the league gets. What does he get? Uh, the fallout continues over the uh, announcement between Jay-Z and the NFL that was announced on, on uh, Wednesday. One thing that's really interesting is that Charlemagne the God posted uh, a video on his Instagram page uh, where he says that his comments were actually edited by the NFL Network. So let me explain to folks what actually happened. What actually happened is that when they had that news conference, select media was invited to the news conference. They then said, no video, no photos, but the folks there were able to actually record audio. Uh, we, we were told that. Mark Thompson, of course, went on our behalf. We had him on the show discussing it. And I, I was concerned. I raised the issue about uh, not having, like, who was recording the video. Well, now all of a sudden we've seen these excerpts that have been dropped by the NFL Network. Uh, and to see Charlemagne say that uh, his comments were edited out, uh, I have sent uh, notice to the 
NFL. I was to folks there saying that full video needs to be released. Avis, I don't understand. I mean, first of all, it's real interesting that, look, I, look, I get a recording audio. But the reality is if you post an audio clip, it's different than you post a video clip. Right. Uh, and so I had an issue with the NFL con controlling the video to that news conference and then sending it out uh, you know, whenever they wanted to as opposed to it being an open and free news conference. Uh, and so when I saw Charlemagne's post, uh, that was nuts to me that, that for, him to say, for him to say that the NFL literally edited his question. And so what you saw on his page was not actually uh, lining up with what took place in the room. Who can be surprised by this? Now, really, this is the NFL that we're talking about. This is the institution who colluded, who colluded uh, in order to, to punish a player, Colin Kaepernick, for his ability and for his bravery in terms of exercising his free speech abilities in this nation. And so why should, be, we, 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 why should we be surprised with anything that they do? Clearly this was some sort of move that they're trying to do to be able to in some way move on past this lingering public relations problem that they have since they continue to refuse to hire this man. Uh, in, and also since they had to settle that lawsuit which suggests that they admitted some culpability in terms of their collusion. And so they wanted to be able to move on and change the narrative. And what better way to do that than to bring in a black face to say, hey, uh, we, we need to move on. Uh, and now I'm not surprised at all uh, that they have let out an edited video which puts the best spin on it, at least they thought put the best spin on it from their perspective. Uh, this isn't going away anytime soon. I think they um, underestimated the backlash that they would get from it. And I also think, quite frankly, that Jay-Z underestimated the backlash that he got from it. Uh, and even if they were to release the whole news conference, which they probably should have in the first place, I really don't think this is going to be an easy pill for a lot of people to swallow cause, because a lot right. of us still think that they're wrong. Kelly, from a communication standpoint, uh, you would think that the NFL uh, would be fair and release the whole deal, but uh, clearly games are being played here. I mean, from an NFL standpoint, I actually see what they're doing. They're trying to put themselves in the best light as possible, but them putting out uh, edited clips of audio and not even video also suggests that something happened at that conference that they don't want us to see or... Uh, uh, assume happen, you know, glean from. Mm -hmm. So when you when you do something like that, you know, it, it doesn't look good. Um, the fact that Charlemagne's uh, clips were edited and he's the one who uh, found out or those are the ones that were released, that's also very interesting because Charlemagne's base is predominantly black and they're predominantly the people who would be watching football right. games should this actually blow over. So the fact that it was actually Charlemagne stuff, that's actually what's making it sound like really fishy to me that they specifically picked him um, out of whoever and however many people were actually at that conference. They picked right. his quote and his tweets or whatever to actually doctor in an attempt to, you know, make this blow over and it blew up in their face. Avis, uh, about 40 minutes ago, uh, TMZ Sports posted this story uh, saying exclusive Jay-Z to become part owner of NFL team. Now, in this story, it says sources connected to Jay and with direct knowledge tell us Jay is going to have a significant ownership interest in the NFL team. As for which team, we're not being told, but we are told it is going to happen in the near future. Uh, now, again, this is TMZ Sports. This has not been, of uh, course, confirmed by anyone else. But this is certainly uh, add, adding another log to the fire of people who have been critical of him forming this alliance with the NFL uh, around uh, entertainment as well as social justice. And folks are saying, oh, now we see why this deal was cut. Just your initial thoughts. Well, then the first thing that he should do as owner is to pick up Colin Kaepernick. How about that, Jay-Z? Exactly. That's my thoughts. Well, we'll see what actually happens. <laughs> We'll see, well, we'll see what we'll see what actually happens there. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you've heard me talk a lot about marijuanastock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at over $340 billion. 
Now, we know that marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, which with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Now, until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill changed all of that, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all of the plants. And folks, is it rocket science? It's an incredible investment opportunity. And that's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. The business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high paying tenants. That's right, they are hemp CBD landlords and you can get in on the action. The folks at 420 Real Estate decided to do something special for Roland Martin Unfiltered Family. Originally, the minimum investment level was 500 bucks. Right now, you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as $200. That's right, 200 bucks up to 10,000. Now, let me recap. This is a $340 billion worldwide industry, and it's growing. You can participate with as little as 200 bucks. To invest, go to marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. All right, y'all. You know what time it is. No charcoal girls are alive. Not a new Why? I got you, on my property. Whoa! Hey! Hey! Oh, I'm uncomfortable. Yo, what is it about the N word that crazy ass white people find so fascinating? These two not only love the N word, well, just check this out. Hey, hey, right? Because the snowman don't work, so we should bring back slavery to whip them niggers. <laughs> Bring back slavery to whip them niggas and bring back the KKK. Oh, I cannot wait to see when these two fools don't get into the college of choice, Cleo. Well, I'm not sure they're not going to get into the college of their choice. We'll see. Because um, there's people already on some of these campuses, the Ivy League campuses with those perspectives, but they're usually a little bit more discreet than these two women. Were they drunk or were they just being uh, freestyling? I mean, I can't, <laughs> I can't tell what was really going on, but... As I say all the time, these kind of perspectives were cloaked once upon a time, but now people are being very blatant with them. And I think that white folks are frustrated about what looks like a shift in the color of power in this country. So we're going to see more of this. And of, of course, not everybody has a camera. So we're missing some of the best moments when the camera wasn't, wasn't present. So stuff doesn't surprise me. Not at all. Yeah, but yeah, Kelly, but I love it when they, I love it when they do roll the cameras. I mean, it helps us see exactly who people really are, right? And what's uh, fascinating to me that people don't necessarily mention, but it's there. These are children who obviously got this kind of rhetoric from somebody, maybe a parent, maybe a mentor, but somebody older than them that is within, you know, possibly even my generation. So to say that racism is dead because of Obama, that whole spiel that was happening, you know, between, you know, 2008 and now, basically. Basically, you know, it, it's just not true. It's, it's a bunch of crap. So, you know, once again, teenagers, white teenagers learning how to be racist from somebody who was a racist. And, you know, circle continues. So, Roland, this is trash. <laughs> this is trash. We can call it trash because they that probably like they're probably evangel <laughs> what did you evangelical. Say, They're probably evil angels, right? <laughs> yeah, so let's just go ahead and call this trash. Um, trash in its rawest form. But I cannot help but think that something, I, and I don't know what is this tendency, and maybe, you know, maybe racism really does explain it, but there seems to be just a such exaggerated effort to be as provocative as you can be. I mean, the notion that we're talking about bring blacks, bring blacks, bring back slavery what does that even mean you know you you want black people enslaved you want us hung from trees you want our mothers and sisters and daughters it means you want to stay in power you want to right. it, means, it, it means you, you want know. to stay in power and we don't want you black people interrupting our status our quo. status and our privilege and we you, you get in our nerves so we have, but, we're, but we're I, acting I don't, out i i again 
as I say, this is trash. So let's just call it trash for what it is. But I can't help but think that. But it's no less this... trashy than the last story about the evangelicals. It's well, that's no, trash I, I, think, too. I think those are totally different because they're not being offensive. The evangelicals weren't being offensive against black people. Well, they speak in cold. They speak in cold. Well, let's not talk about. They speak in cold. These white women were uh, not. Uh, Melek, I dare say you're offensive to black folks when you don't say a damn thing about racism, but you call yourself a pastor. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, I forgot, because journalists generally don't ask those questions that they want in the article. Um, but this is trash. What I mean, the hell? What? <laughs> well, you were just, you know, they didn't ask about those things. He but didn't you say said, that. He you said it didn't make the paper. Can you ask they might have asked them. Well, OK, I'm Can sorry. Make as Cleo clarified, those things didn't make it to copy. So they didn't want those things actually made in. If they talked about it, they didn't want that actually in the article. I say on subject. Well, I'm, I'm just making a point about, you know, you said you said that those things were actually racist. I mean, well, the discussion was about what these crazy, trashy girls said. But Cleo actually switched to actually talk about what the evangelicals said. I they nuanced go, I'm it. Just having, I think I'm they, just they all the same look, thing. I'm just here so I won't be fine, Roland. Wow. So you won't be like, I don't know. I'm talking. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Right. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. I want to talk about this uh, weird story uh, out of Louisiana where the uh, United States Fifth Circuit a fifth court of appeals with the fifth circuit uh, ruled uh, they actually withdrew an opinion it made in april reinstating a lawsuit against black lives matter organizer deray mckesson uh, they ruled that he did not have uh, in in any first amendment uh, rights now here's what happened a district judge ruled in 2017 that black lives matter is not a particular entity of any sort and like the tea party or civil rights movement can't be sued According to this, so this story, the judge also concluded that McKesson solely engaged in protected speech at a demonstration. Well, a law officer claims that McKesson is the reason why he uh, suffered injuries, serious injuries, uh, during a protest in 2016 after the shooting death of Alton Sterling. Uh, we, we initially had DeRay booked for the show, then he canceled. Hopefully we will uh, rehab him on the show to get his thoughts on this lawsuit. Uh, Joseph, I want to start with you. Uh, it, it's sort of strange, again, that this officer is trying to pursue one individual who was participating in a protest as if that person is over all the actions of all the protesters. He's the king of black protesters. You know, so that's why they got to take him out. I mean, look, it's very simple what's happening here, right? You've got a, a representative, a guy who's fairly well known in DeRay McKisson, who is going to be the villain, right? You talked in the last segment about how Tlaib and, and Omar and AOC are all villains of, 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 of Donald Trump and foils. This is just another play from that handbook, right? He's trying to sue DeRay McKisson to make, basically silence him. What I find interesting, uh, two things are the first is, Protected speech has been like a, 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 a catch-all tool that the conservatives have been using for years to try to protect stuff like gun rights and, and abortion and so forth to try to get those issues on their side by using the First Amendment. Now comes a time where somebody's using the First Amendment to go against what they stand for and all of a sudden he's the bad guy, right? I mean, uh, the second thing that, that, that occurs to me is the Fifth Circuit in Louisiana is probably one of the most conservative courts in the nation, one of the most conservative circuits, and I looked it up before I came on the show, of the 16 judges that are sitting right now, five were appointed by Donald Trump. Five. And before that, the ones that were appointed by uh, uh, President Obama in eight years, two. Five versus two, mostly conservative, pushing far to the right past and the, any of the other conservatives that sit there. So this is probably what, what I think a sign of things to come in the fact that Trump keeps pushing these judges, Mr. McConnell keeps putting them on the court, and we're going to keep getting nonsensical rulings like this one. Here's what's interesting. First of all, the uh, lawsuit says when the defendants ran out of water bottles they were throwing at the Baton Rouge City Police, a member of defendant Black Lives Matter, he's saying that a member of McKesson's group, Black Lives Matter, which he's actually not over, under the control and custody of the defendants, then picked up a piece of concrete or similar rock 
like substance and hurled into the police that were making arrests. They said the officer was knocked to the ground, he said that some of his teeth were knocked out and had an injury to his jaw and his brain. Now, here's what's interesting here. In this opinion, Erica and Eton, it says, we of course acknowledge that McKesson's negligent conduct took place in the context of a political protest. But Claiborne Hardware does not insulate the petitioner from liability for his own negligent conduct simply because he and those he associated with also intended to communicate a message. Um, I don't know where, but are they saying that DeRay was throwing rocks, was throwing water? To have judges say he had negligent conduct, like what? Yeah, I, I, I really believe that this is really another way to dissuade people from really um, pushing back and standing up and peacefully boycotting, or just boycotting, period, which is protected by the First Amendment. Particularly as we look at, you know, the 2019 coming up on the 2020 cycle, this is about people being engaged. It goes from local to state to um, federal. This is about people saying that we um, are the ones that are taxpayers. We uh, pay these elected officials. We also pay um, the police um, officers who are directed to protect and serve us. So um, I think that um, also it is, um, and you mentioned this, time kind of to play connect the dots. All of the conversations that have been had on this show around the courts around the number of federal judges that Donald Trump is um, 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 nominating and then that McConnell is making sure um, sweeps through the Senate fairly quickly are reasons around why we boycott, are reasons around why we protest, are reasons around why we participate in um, voter rights advocacy because all of these things add up to um, the body politic that we're all involved now. So I think it's most important that number one, as Joseph pointed out, the number of uh, judges that are on that that are um, on that bench, as far as that Fifth Circuit Court, that people pay attention to that, um, and use these things as motivation to be engaged um, in your local communities. But but Eton, this is why I continue to try to explain to people by connecting the dots why you have to understand voting in this election is tied to federal judges being appointed. Because when you have judges who will make such rulings that then will have an impact on protest, what they're saying is any individual can be sued by a cop uh, if they are engaged exactly in a right. protest, which will have a chilling effect on anybody who goes out and protests and then says, oh, well, you were in a group, these folks over here threw something, you're responsible for their actions, when in fact, you're not. Right, and the way this ties into the first topic that we, we talked about is that they're doing this to, to kind of squash anybody from protesting or demonstrating in any way, shape, or form. The same way the NFL is whiteballing Kaepernick to try to, you know, dissuade any players from taking a knee or protesting in any way, shape, or form. And it's, it's always interesting when they use language that we're going to try to create a safe environment for players to use their voices, and they don't ever do it. You know what I mean? As long as it's not protesting, as long as it's not taking a knee, as long as it's not this, 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 or this, you're safe to do it. But a safe environment in the NFL is kind of a joke, right? Right. <laughs> you know, the sport's built on mayhem, and you're trying to create a safe environment for, for a peaceful protest that offends people, that offends the league, that offends white viewers, that offends people who don't even know what they're protesting about. Yeah, and, and don't forget that, the, you know, they, the, the same thing they told Dr. King, that it wasn't the right time for him to protest, or it wasn't the right way for him to protest. But now, You'll hear all the mainstream America talk about how much they love Dr. King. You know, on, on the Martin Luther King Day, they'll, they'll, they'll tweet, they'll, they'll make their, you know what I mean, signs, they're, they'll you know, tweet their quotes and everything like that. But then they look at Colin Kaepernick, they say, no, no, he shouldn't be allowed to protest and he should be punished. And they almost have a victory lap for him not being in the, in the NFL. And that's the hypocritical part. But I, will, I do want to say one thing real quick before, before I stop, and you referred to it earlier. I, too, would like to hear from Colin Kaepernick himself. I would. You know what I mean? There's a large, large, pe large amount of people, my, my son included, his teammates included, you know, that are like, you know, well, you know, first, should, should we watch the NFL again? You know, first we, we heard that, you know, he had this settlement, and so, okay, he got a settlement, so he got his back pay from the whole time that they were whiteballing him, so everything should be okay, right? But then we heard a little bit uh, after that that, you know, he's working out and he wants to get back in the league. 
And then we hear Jay-Z, you know, partnering with the NFL, and we hear a negative reaction from everybody around Kaepernick, from his girlfriend, Nessa, from, you know, Eric Reed, who we know how close he is with him. Got it. And all I got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, just give me one second. First of all, I, I, I want to I go back to the DeRay story. And mm -hmm. here's the deal, folks. Uh, this is an important case. All of us in media, we understand this. It's called New York Times versus Sullivan. Mm -hmm. That was a landmark Supreme Court case where the Supreme Court ruled uh, that a city could not sue protesters uh, for defaming them. Uh, Dr. King and others took a full-page ad out in the New York Times uh, in 1960, blasting Alabama for its racism, criticizing the Montgomery Police Department. What happened was uh, a, 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 an actual commissioner sued, saying that they were defamed. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court. They tried to, uh, in fact, the initial ruling was that a judge ruled in favor of Montgomery, Alabama officials, and they were awarded $500,000. This case went all the way up to the Supreme Court after the New York Times uh, uh, appealed the case. Uh, and had this case not been ruled this way by those Supreme Court justices, that means that anybody who criticized public officials for Jim Crow could have sued media entities and sued, pro sued civil rights activists as a result of them calling out racism. And so just so, again, I want people to understand why judges matter. Had the Supreme Court not made that decision, then all of these Jim Crow city folks, county folks could have sued activists for daring to criticize Jim Crow. And so I just want folks just to understand that so, so, well, so well, you just, understand it just, it just, why it just, judges matter. Go ahead, Joe. And just real quickly, I mean, will this Supreme Court make a decision like that? Will this Supreme Court Great stand point. up for, for, for freedom of speech, stand up for Times versus Sullivan and hold it as president? I have my doubts. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. Hey everybody, this is your man Fred Hammond, and you're watching Roland Martin, my man, Unfiltered. Hi, this is Essence Atkins, and you're watching Roland Martin, Unfiltered. Hey yo, peace world, what's going on? It's the love king of R&B, Raheem Devon, and you're watching Roland Martin, Unfiltered. Hi, my name is Brisha Webb, and you're watching Roland Martin, Unfiltered. Ow. Well, I like a nice filter usually, but we can be unfiltered. What's going on? This is Tobias Trevelyan, and if you're ready, you are listening to and you are watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. What's up? I'm Lance Gross and you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. Hi, this is Cheryl Lee Ralph and you are watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, could it be any other way? Really? It's Roland Martin. You want to support Roland Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Hey fam, want to check out Roller Martin Unfiltered? The blackest show on all of digital cable and broadcast. Want to check out our audio podcast. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Press play.